Hey everyone, today I wanted to talk about exporting photos. This came in the comments of one of my recent videos as a suggested topic and it's actually a really good one. I get asked quite often on the settings that I use to export and to post to various platforms. So I figured it was a good topic. So let's jump right into it. Right now we're in Photoshop and I'm going to first show you how I export for either Facebook, the web, or Instagram. I actually use the same setting for all three of the platforms and I found that it seems to work the best. It gives you fast loading times on the web, it gives you accurate colors, and then it keeps the quality pretty high on both Instagram and Facebook. And I actually found this um, a couple years ago when searching for the best resolutions for Facebook images and it seems to work really well for all three. So. We have our finished image here. So what I do is I go to File and I go to Export, Save for Web Legacy. So once this window opens, these are the settings that I use. So up here I have JPEG selected. I come down to Quality and I bring this down to like 80%, 75%, somewhere right in that neighborhood. This is very important right here. You want to convert to sRGB. If you shoot, your camera has two settings. It has Adobe RGB or sRGB. Adobe RGB has more color space, but unfortunately the web can't read all of that color space. So if you export as Adobe RGB or you don't have this clicked, the web is going to try its best to render the colors that are in your your photo and it's not going to always do the greatest job so you always want to make sure that anytime you're going to digital uh, whether it be Facebook or the web or Instagram that you have this clicked. The next thing I do is I go down here to image size and on the width I change this to 2048 and then I leave the pixel or I leave the height locked so it changes it. So the reason that you don't want to export a full resolution photo is you're asking Facebook or Instagram to compress your image and honestly the power that Photoshop has and the algorithms that it has in the background are going to do a much better job than Facebook or Instagram is going to. After that you just hit save, you change the title here and then you hit save. So then that image now is saved on my desktop. We can go in here and for ease of upload, what I do is I actually just click on it and go to AirDrop. And because my phone is set up, I can actually just click that and it will send it straight over. So I don't have to worry about emailing files to myself or anything like that. Now it's on my phone ready to upload. If you don't have Photoshop or you don't use Photoshop, you can do the same thing in Lightroom. So we have the same image here. If you come up here to File and then Export, so you have all of your settings here. It's basically the same thing that we were just in. You just have a little bit different things. So first of all, you want to choose where it's going to export to. So we'll choose that. If you want to put it in a subfolder or rename it, you can do all that. We don't really care about that right now. Down here, it's the same box that we saw just a minute ago. So we're going to save it out as a JPEG. We're going to make sure sRGB is clicked. These are the other ones. So you have Profoto, Adobe RGB. Again, if you're going to the web, you want to make sure you have sRGB clicked. Um, again, we're going to take that quality down just a little bit. We don't need super high quality. With this number cranked up all the way, you're just going to get a bigger file size that Facebook or Instagram is going to try to apply their compression to, and it's just going to make the photo look that much worse. So by exporting at a higher quality, you're not necessarily going to get a better output. So then down here, again on the long end, we're going to compress it to 20 by 48 pixels and then we have a resolution at 150. Again, the retina displays on Apple iPhone are I believe 150 pixels per inch. So that's why I have it set at that. If you were printing, this would be something like 300 and you obviously wouldn't want to downscale it to 
20 by 48, you probably want to export the full um, full length file. Again, you, you should probably check with your printer if you're printing um, images to make sure that you're printing the right sizes. Um, when I export from this, I actually put some sharpening on it. So I know that this setup is going to go for the screen. So this will add a little bit extra sharpening that will apply to the image to view on a monitor. Um, and then I don't click any of that other stuff. If you want to put a watermark or whatever, it has, it has a spot where you can save and put a watermark each time you export your photo, things like that. So then you just click export. Up here you have your status bar. And then if we look on our desktop, you'll see we have that photo right here. So if you look at the two, they'll look almost identical um, here. So the <clears throat> Lightroom image is a little bit bigger. So you have 987 kilobytes where the other one is 755. Again, you have the exact same dimensions of resolution, the same RGB color space, this one has a color embedded profile where this one doesn't. This also apply the metadata. So that may be some difference that you see in the file size. If we quick look on the images, they look identical. I mean, there's virtually no difference between the two. The only difference that you're gonna see is the Lightroom export is slightly more sharp on the lines. You can see it kind of down here in this skid mark. I don't know if it's gonna to transfer to the video, but as you click that, there's a little bit more sharpening and that's what was applied in that last step. Now, if you're uploading to Instagram, that doesn't really matter because what I do is I actually go in and I add some additional sharpening and clarity because the the image is so small you want to give it that extra pop and i can actually show you that right now all right so here we are in instagram and here's our the photo that we just imported so as you can see instagram loves the square picture profile so what i do is i actually click this little button right here that's going to give us our um our 20 by 48 normal picture that we exported. If you want to zoom in a little bit, I usually do that. I found that photos that fill the frame a little bit um, do a little bit better. It gives you some more screen real estate, but I don't necessarily like the 100% square profile. So what you'll do is click next, and then I click this edit button right here. And then what I do on almost all of my photos is I go in and add a little bit of structure, not too much, maybe like 30%. And if you click before and after, you can see what that looks like. I click done, and then I'll go over here to sharpen, and I'll boost up sharpening about the same thing. So again, just click it, you can see the difference. And then just to make sure I didn't go too far, I click over this. And then the other thing that sometimes I do, because I cropped in and I lost some of that vignette that I like, is I'll add a little bit of vignette. So before, after, before, after, and then obviously you would just go in and apply all of your stuff. So um, let's jump back to the other video. That's the basic of uploading into Instagram. So now that we're back from that quick example in Instagram. I hope that this video helps. I hope it takes some of the mystery of, around exporting your images for those particular platforms um, and sheds some light on what I do. So again, if you have any questions or comments, uh, leave them in the comments section below. And also if you have any um, ideas for future videos or if you have any questions, uh, leave it down there as well. I always read those. It's honestly a great resource for building this video library. And um, I want to build videos that, you know, help people take their skills to the next level. So until next time, take care.